Welcome to the second episode of Concept Quest. We're going to play a game, draw from it, and create our own character that lives in that world. And today we're playing Pokemon Arceus. In the first episode of Concept Quest, we did an indie game and it was only a couple hours long. But this is a massive Pokemon game and I thought it would be really cool to design our own Pokemon trainer. If you want to skip straight to the drawing part, you can go and do that. But if you want to join me on the journey of playing through the game, let's play Pokemon Arceus. <laughs> this reminds me of when you first play Zelda and they tell you to wake up. So it looks like we're a trainer from modern times. Oh, and also, welcome to Pokemon Arceus. This is like the Professor Oak of the game. <laughs> I actually like his design. It's kind of silly, but it looks cool. The beginning of the game shows you like going through a wormhole, so I guess you're just crossing space and time. So cute! I really want the leaf one this time. Usually I'm a fire Pokemon person. Always started. Charmander. But I want this guy. I'm forgetting his name right now. <laughs> I gotta wait till I capture him. <laughs> that animation is so cool for catching a Pokemon. I thought I would get him here. I guess not. I have to just round up his Pokemon. The water Pokemon's cute. <laughs> You're welcome. And this is the village. It's very quaint. of the survey course. So they're gonna test us on our, on our journey. I will be worthy. I tried to play Sword and Shield before, and... Oh, what's this? Mystery! Look at those little cute Pokemon. That... will start a forest fire. We can't have that. Yeah, I use. I tried playing Sword and Shield. I tried playing Sword and Shield, and it just didn't hit for me. It just felt like the same Pokemon game. Like, they haven't changed or done much with the series, so this. I was hoping that this one would be a little bit of a change and it would feel fun. And so far, it has been really fun. They did some things right, I won't say everything, but this is a step in the right direction for Pokemon, I think. They made catching Pokemon fun, made it more of an adventure. I do miss the gym battles, though. set on our first mission. I like how Abra is just chilling in the corner. <laughs> Perpetually asleep. Oh, what a cool uniform. <laughs> Pretty much everybody here has a belt on. 
like around their midsection. <gasps> we choose our Pokemon. Duh. Choose a little guy, Rowlet, in front of me. He's so cute. <laughs> the little bow tie loot leaf. And his cute little like beak. I love it so much. I I did choose Cyndaquil back in the day, but uh, like I said, I'm a fire Pokemon guy. But Rowlet's just too cute. Apparently you can catch them after the game ends, so... Cutie! Oh my goodness. So yeah, I'll catch them after the game ends. We'll have Cyndaquil again. This guy looks pretty cool. Looks like the traitors in Zelda. our first battle let's go first battle is always usually super easy <laughs> a togepi let's go Oh my gosh, I can move around. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, it doesn't look like I can do anything, but still, that's cool. Go, Rowlet Gust. It's the only move you have. Haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, he's actually a cool guy. He's nice. And now we get to go into the big open world of Pokemon Arceus. I go by Arc Zephyr a lot, so Arceus, Arc. That has nothing to do with anything, I just thought it was interesting. <laughs> Oh, it all depends on me. Cool. I got this. I got Pokeballs. That's how you crouch. I didn't mean to throw that. Aspiration Hill. It's very pretty. Usually I care more about the cities. Oh, <laughs> cute. Bidoof. I got you! Mission complete! a high hurdle catching that bit of he's a very dangerous Pokemon <laughs> I have to say the uniforms pretty cool looking and I always love a good flowing scarf or cape I mean, you can play with those so easily in design, like making these cool little capes or, or uh, scarves that blow in the wind. Same thing with long hair. Maybe we'll design a Pokemon trainer with long hair. Say, I don't think I've seen anyone so far with long hair. <laughs> Get, uh... A Miku Pokemon trainer. 
So this guy is the leader. I've been waiting for you. It's Morpheus. <laughs> oh, his kimono is cool though. Especially Pokemon tries to be very simple. For it to do that really cool design at the bottom is is awesome. Let's see what you're made of. What? <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> and game over. You're done. You're done. Time to try some crafting. It's a big thing in this game. Looks very basic. Crafting systems are usually pretty fun though. Gives you a lot of freedom. More Pokeballs! Wait, Pokemon shrink themselves down? I thought it was the Pokeballs. Okay, that's just minor mind-blowing information. That's cool. I really thought it was the Pokeballs. the Pokedex. Oh, so every Pokemon has its own research tasks. So it's not just seeing and catching the Pokemon, you actually have to do stuff. Ponita. No! <laughs> do you see me? Wait, come back. Go be doof. No, bad. Get no the tree. Get get the horse. I yeah yeah. Okay, let's try this again. Eat. <laughs> I didn't mean to hit you with that. You don't want the berry. You don't like it. How about cherries? Oh, he likes it! Or she. We won't know till we catch him. Hurry up! Pokeball! Come on! Oh, yeah. What? That still wasn't enough! <laughs> okay. Come on, Rowlet. Let's go! Cool. Pokemon battles are cool. I can sort of explore the space. Oh, but he's gonna be super effective against me if he uses any fire moves. I guess I can use this Agile style? What the heck is this? Oh, I get to attack twice. And a critical- No! You weren't supposed to kill it! Oh gosh. Oh. Okay. Is that one bigger? Oh, it is. Is that Rapidash? I remember my Pokemon, okay. Alright, let's just see. I just want to see what level it is. Maybe it's too crazy. Can't be too bad. Level 40? 
Oh no, okay, we gotta run. Look at you, <laughs> you're too tiny. <laughs> nope, this is not happening. Return, time to run away. Goodbye. And hello, little Pokemon, I don't know what you are. Drifloon, so cute. You're like a little cloud. You look harmless. All right, back to town. Let's get our research points. Level up a little bit. Mm. Gotta switch to my pajamas. Would these be considered pajamas? It's just a, like a relaxed kimono, not my battle gear, right? I'm gonna change my eye color. Hmm. No. This has nothing, this will have very little impact on the game, but I'm very particular. Ooh, red looks good. And white looks cool too. But I think I gotta like the red, especially if we're gonna be wearing that red hat. I can always change it. Oh, I can go grow crops here okay I need apricorns I need more pokeballs always I got the money let's do it it's battle time I guess you're sort of a gym leader <laughs> Pikachu Don't worry, we got you. Pika. Such a cutie. Serious mode. <laughs> I feel bad, she has one Pokemon. I have a whole <laughs> roster. Uh, go Rowlet. You're flying Pokemon, so you... That's not gonna be good. Oh, I guess you're fine. Mm, I can restore HP now. Oh my gosh. Oh no, you're paralyzed. Okay, let's just try to fight through it. Fight through the pain. Good job. <laughs> that was very easy. Now I can cross this bridge. And there's a new character. Hello. Of course I'm confident. Much lax. He looks cute. That's the previous evolution of Snorlax, I think. I can't remember. Well, it's okay. Let's battle. Starly. Use attacks. <laughs> oh, that didn't do much damage. That's not good. Come back, Starly. That's my bad.
Mm, sure. Oh no, he's level 7. I didn't mean to make this mistake. You're so cute and harmless. What have I done? Maybe he'll get confused. Oh, nope, he's not gonna get confused. Oh, you're so screwed. I'm so sorry, Drifloon. <laughs> Maybe I can put him to sleep. No hope. Nope. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright. Let's get someone... Oh, level 6. I don't know what's wrong with me. I really gotta look at the levels, but at least this is doing more damage. Go, Boozel? Man, that Aqua Jet looks cool. Be sad. You knocked out two of my Pokemon. Oh, nice. It'll give me a revive. Time for some new Pokemon. Up chop. Cricketot. He's a cute one. And I got it without being spotted. Nice. Some berries. The scenery is really pretty. There's so many places to explore. You don't really need to stay on the main quest. You can go wherever you want. wonder if I can get to that backpack. Oh, I thought that was a Drifloon. <laughs> is there a Pokemon in this thing? There is! Burmy. Go, Starly! Oh! We almost killed him, Starly. We need him alive. Pokeball time. Oh, darn it. I can't do any more damage, so I just gotta throw Pokeballs at it. Yes. Is that a... It looks like I can get close enough. Oh. Oh. Oh no, it saw me. Okay, run away. <laughs> I'm safe. Oh, it's a cutie. Oh no, I'm in danger of this one too? Okay, Pokemon battle times. I'm serious, that Aqua Jet move just looks so cool. <laughs> Quick attack looks cool too. Or should I just outright do it? Yeah, sure. Nice. 
Thank for the medicine. Come on, Zubat. Get in that Pokeball. No, Rowlet. Come on, one more time. I think I got it. Nice. I love the little firework at the end. That's that's cool. Chesto berry. All right, I gotta be able to get to this backpack. Can you swim is the question. Uh, oh, looks like you can. Oh no, you can't, you can't swim. I lied. What did I, oh, I drowned. <laughs> I survived somehow. Get these berries first. That was a football throw. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. Oh, he disappeared. No, he did not disappear. Why, game? What the heck? <laughs> oh, he looks pissed. Just gust him. Oh, that didn't do much. Even though I'm level four, I'm twice his level. Let's try the strong style. Destroy him! Yeah! Good job, Rowlet. Hello, fellow traveler. Hmm, okay. It's Geo Dude, and he sees me already. Pokemon. Let's go! Love seeing the Aqua Jet. I guess I could catch him now. I don't have to kill him. Yay, Geodude! We got him. And finally, let's finish up this quest. What? Poof! <laughs> it's just behind me all the time. You just want to take pictures? Of me getting my my butt beat up? Oh, that's nice of her. Even though I just healed my Pokemon with potions. <laughs> Pokemon. Okay, let's do this thing. I hope it's not level 40 like the previous Rapidash. This is even. Am I doing anything? Is it staring straight at me? Should I just. <laughs> okay, that didn't do anything. Thought I could sneak up on it.
go Shinx! I really love the design of this guy, he is so cute. I feel like he has a very pop star design. It's got the stars, the vibrant blue. It's a cute Pokemon. All his stats are boosted. Lovely. Let's try Thundershock. Yeah. That did not do much. Oh no. Okay, maybe we'll get him with uh, like paralysis. Thundershock one more time. Sorry, you're going down, Shinx. Nice. You paralyzed him. All right, Shinx, let's get you out of there. You did good job. Mm. Starly? No. Yeah, let's do it. it kind of looks like a bug Pokemon. Maybe the flying boost will hurt him. And they did. But let's try to catch him instead of killing him. <laughs> Pokeball. Let's catch us a Cricketune. Yeah! Wow, first try. Nice job, my team. The great weird deer. Word deer. He looks majestic. And wise. He's like a, the Gandalf deer. <laughs> What a nice beard. I wonder what he would look like with his beard shaved off. We have like a really tiny chin. He's just looking at me so intensely. That's kindness? <laughs> he looked so mad. <laughs> or maybe just ambivalent. I don't know. Oh, do we get a v to eventually ride on him? He's like our travel companion? I saw that in the trailer. Oh, we get a camp that's further out. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, let's do it. Make a camp. So that way you don't have to like start at home base every time you can actually go to multiple places. That's smart. Again, this Pokemon game did a lot of stuff in the right direction. Honestly, I feel like it took a couple nods from Zelda. It is their IP, so why not? Camp is set up. How cute. Nice. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. New characters. Cleavor. Okay, all these characters look interesting. Alright, we got some political drama brewing in Pokemon. <laughs> I just want to catch Pokemon, guys. You're gonna draw attention to me now? I didn't... <laughs> I didn't want that. 
Adaman. Okay. And Irida. Adaman and Irida. Yeah, send me on the Pokemon quests. I'm ready. I don't know what Cleaver looks like. Is that a new one? That guy's eyes. He looks drunk. <laughs> when he squints his eyes. Yes, I did fall through space and time. I'm a time warrior. And we're going to study Quelvor, so we'll save that for next time. Hello, Bidoof. And here we are drawing Pokemon and trying to draw our own Pokemon trainer. This is a big game, so we're going to be splitting this into a couple episodes. Uh, the episode one of Concept Quest was an indie game. It was like two hours, two to three hours. And this is Pokemon, so... It's like a 25 hour game plus, you know, extras that you can do to finish out the whole thing. So we're going to split this into three parts. Basically how I like to design and learn more where the first part is we'll be drawing from some, some of the game reference. Like right here we're drawing the, the Pokemon trainers. We're going to draw the male and female characters. And uh, second part, we will be drawing from reference. So I'll be looking up reference of my own, of things that might be cool for Pokemon trainers, and starting to basically put things into my visual library that will help me for the third and final step, which is to design our own character, our own Pokemon trainers, and uh, bring them to a final piece. So this will be three parts. Each one will have a game portion and a drawing portion. You're welcome to just skip ahead to the drawing, watch some of the game. I enjoyed this game a lot. It was way better than Sword and Shield. Um, you know, they didn't do everything the way that I would like, but uh, it's a step in the right direction, I think, for changing the formula of Pokemon. You know, the people that grew up with Pokemon are very much adults now. I know it still aims at kids, but we need a cool adult Pokemon game that has sophisticated RPG elements and is not just a kidsy story, um, but still makes us, like, nostalgic for our childhood, you know? And this, I felt like, did that. It brought some mystery and adventure back to the Pokemon games. I do miss the gym battles, but this is still fun. So I'm trying to just draw the character right now and understand the visual language, but I will admit that I struggled with these drawings. The first, like, six or so that you see here, I'll let you know when we get to the ones that I'm, I start to get back on track. Um, I think it's important to show the struggles because you know, this is what we do as artists, especially when we're learning. I'm not, um, you know, the best character designer or anything. I'm not claiming to be that. I'm learning. And that's what I want people to understand is okay. Like, you should be designing characters even when you're still learning how to do anatomy and stuff. So it all improves together. Otherwise, like, say you do no designing and just try to master anatomy as much as possible and never practice designing. When it's time to actually design characters, they're going to be terrible and you're going to hate the fact that you're, you know, you feel like your skill should be higher, but it's not because you've never designed before. But if you sort of work on all these skills and they're terrible altogether, they'll improve altogether too. Um, and that disconnect won't be as crazy and strong. And that was one of the fatal mistakes that I made uh, as an artist, and I'm trying to fix that. And I think a lot of artists do that, young artists. They, they try to master the basics so that they can do all the cool stuff. And the basics can be boring and, and challenging sometimes. You have to make things fun. 
and still go into the characters and worlds that you want to create. You can always improve them later. Um, it helps you learn and it helps you become a better artist. So with these ones, I know that these are, at least for me, they're not good. And I got trapped in a mindset of trying to draw these and make them perfect, even though when really I should have been looking at their shape language, how uh, they design these characters. The Pokemon games are a little different because it's not like you're looking at a main hero character. It's supposed to be a persona that you can jump into, right? You can even change the clothes and everything and make it look like you. Um, so it's not a normal type of game where it has a fixed set, like all the characters you meet in the game, they have a story behind them um, and they have a specific visual language. These characters are avatars for you. So they're not going to be designed the same, quite the same way. They still need to be impactful, but it also needs to be adjustable so that you can feel like you step into the shoes of that character. Um, one thing, this is, uh, this is probably not something that I, you know, should be the spokesperson for, but, you know, it came up on a TikTok recently and someone was mentioning, this is at a kind of left field, but someone was mentioning uh, the Andrew Loomis books, which I've recommended before and I'm trying not to anymore. Uh, and they said that the Loomis books uh, were, he was racist. Um, and there were some particular illustrations that were uh, racist and it made me realize I looked through his books and I didn't see any people of color being illustrated I mean he's it came you have to recognize what time period he came from these are old books maybe we shouldn't draw from these books anymore we have modern teachers that don't have that kind of prejudice in them but it got me thinking about even the Pokemon games like you can change your skin color in the game to you know uh, a darker skin color but when it's advertised the the characters are all white and I know that there's a um, you know different cultures this is from Japan um, but you have to think about the fact that white is sort of the default uh, color and I'm I'm a white person so it is very much it's not something that I think about and I should because I can imagine that a person of color when they pick up a game like this and their skin color is not the default it feels very odd for them the experience is not the same as mine and it made me kind of feel bad I I, I feel like there should be something that I don't know, that, that needs to change about that. Anyways, a side conversation that just <laughs> is probably an uncomfortable one, you know. I'm sure Nintendo doesn't want to be seen as racist, but, you know, we have to acknowledge these things and talk about them as we move forward. Uh, if people of color aren't comfortable reading these old you know, art books that kind of have embedded racism in them, then we should be making resources that are inclusive so that they are comfortable. And the same goes for the media that we create, like Pokemon games. So yeah, still struggling here <laughs> with these characters. I should have been looking at her shape language, but <coughs> I... I'm not really getting into it. And to be fair, some of these characters are very basic. Like, they all have this kimono. So you're always going to get this sort of swooping um, shape with these square belts that everybody has. Uh, so you're going to get, you know, some changes in the face. But for the most part, the costumes aren't... Or the, the costume design isn't really changing all that much. You still have that kimono with the fur but you'll see that they still find a way to keep it 
um, unique for each character. So for this person, for this woman, I she's very <coughs> oh my god for this woman she's very rigid in nature very stoic so she, her design is very kind of flat but also has little spikes in her hair um, and that's probably to match her personality and then we have the professor <laughs> who just looks like a total goofball which I'm down for I actually like his design I'm not entirely sure what it is about it that makes it so interesting but here you can see that um, he has these sort of like fluffy round shapes uh, if you look at the the lining on his vest is these like little round shapes. It's not like a clean line. And then if you look at above his head, there's a little poof behind that. And he even uses that same shape language in the pattern on his hat, where it's these uh, swooping curves with the circles. So you can see there is uh, a good design happening here, even though it is a little uh, quirky and of course he has the lap coat to indicate he's a the Professor Oak type <laughs> um, yeah and even even you can see in his um, in his pants they're a little bit like bulgy to match that sort of roundness that's in the, the round featheriness even the the curve of his shoe matches that and you contrast that with some like powerful square shapes like the shape of his face um, and his coat but you'll notice even his eyes have the shape of the the featheriness where it's like that um it's like a half of an ellipse. So that was a really interesting design choice. There's so many ways that you can take a character. So it's really interesting to see what the final is for, for some of these. You could so easily redesign these and they would still work. Um, there's just like a million different options, so... There's never just going to be one perfect solution. It's just the one that you end up liking the most yourself. But yeah, so I may be describing the shape language to you now, but as I was drawing this, I was getting lost in the detail and not really observing the design or the thinking that went behind this character. I struggled with that because I was having trouble with the drawing. <laughs> and that's going to happen, especially if you're a beginner drawing characters. You're going to struggle with everything. The pose, the anatomy. You're going to try your best and still struggle with things, and it's going to frustrate you. So you have to remember not to get too lost, especially when you're all that you're supposed to be doing at this stage is capturing the shape language of this character so you can understand what it is that made that character. So I just described it to you, but I, was, even, I wasn't thinking about it at the time, and I should have been. Adding the little lines on the pants always makes it look very fancy. <laughs> I like doing that, even as a little bit of a heel, which is cool. So he has some, like, he's like quirky up top, classy on the bottom. <laughs> so that, that tells a little, it's a little bit of storytelling about his character, which is neat. I like that a lot. And 
I'm just trying to work out the last few details of the drawing. And then I believe there's two more where I'm still struggling with the drawing. Um, but it's okay. I'll get through them. And you can join me and know that, you know, lots of failure is going to happen on your way to learning stuff. And you have to know that it's okay. I pushed through these drawings and I, the whole time that I was doing it, I knew that, you know, there were issues. And I wasn't happy with it. I knew I was learning. I had to sort of, you have to accept it. Acceptance is a big part of it. You're gonna fail, you're gonna make bad drawings, things that you're really not happy with. But you have to learn. And to learn, you're gonna have to make some really terrible drawings. <laughs> I started making it sort of a mantra of um, making terrible art. Like, commit yourself to making bad art. That is one way that you can sort of bypass um, that fear of creating stuff, because you want, usually we, as artists, a lot of us have a lot of perfectionist tendencies, so we don't want to create anything, because we think it's going to be bad, so then we don't start anything ever. And that's such a bad mentality to get into, because you'll never draw. So committing yourself to making bad art that's hopefully like a mental workaround that might work in your favor. Like, I'm not going to make anything good. I'm going to make something truly terrible <laughs> and then try to fix it. And when you come at it from that angle, sometimes it's not so bad. This guy is the first guy that we had a Pokemon battle with. He's, he's very nice in the game. He's the traitor. He kind of looks... Like I said, the trader from Zelda a little bit. Or he gives me the same vibes. Um, so he uses a lot of these ellipse shapes and square shapes. So we have half ellipses on the hat. These full ellipses on the... Well, actually, they're half ellipses at the bottom of his little, um, what would you even call that that's down his front? An apron? <laughs> um, yeah, so there's half ellipses at the bottom of his apron, but the patterning, they made it full ellipses. Um, so that's really interesting. There's also sort of an ellipse shape on the front end of his boot, because they made it very round, almost like Goofy um, or or Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Their their shoes do that little bulgy thing at the toes. So yeah, a lot of his design language is ellipses and um, and squares. doesn't have to be complicated, especially for Pokemon. Things are meant to be simplified. I started looking at some reference of some of the old games, and that's where I came across this guy. I think he's... I don't know what game he's from, but he's a gardener, clearly, so he probably has, like, insect Pokemon or something. Ground Pokemon. I just liked his simplified design. The bow, and he's kind of like a stocky build, so it was an interesting difference from some of the other characters. That was the one thing that was cool about Sword and Shield. I may not have liked the game, but they nailed the characters. Like the characters looked really, really cool. And you can't always say that about the Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, 
I feel like they've run out of ideas sometimes with the Pokemon, but the characters, they really nailed in Sword and Shield, and even in this game so far, I feel like I like all the characters. For this guy, you've got this sort of um, pointy but round triangle shape. Um, you can see it in the shoes, on his shirt. It was a nice little design. I liked that. And here we are finally with the last... Uh, I do three more sketches here. Characters from the Pokemon Arceus game. Where I finally start to get back into observing the shape language. So I was proud of myself for getting out of it. And you can do that too. You just gotta stick with it. So this guy's shape language is really basically just one shape, which is like a triangle square. Um, think of a if you were looking at a rectangle, and then one side of it was uh, tapered. If you look at like. You can see it in his mustache, his eyebrows, the coat coming down. Um, it's even on his feet and his sandal. Even the threads to the sandal that are going around his toes, it's just a bent version of that. That, uh, that tapered rectangle is his shape. He has such a simple design, and I love that kimono. Doing that, having that little design there is really, really cool. But his design is so simple. I'm <laughs> drawing the little mustache. So yeah, I, you can see like I'm keeping things simple when I'm drawing it because all I'm doing is re drawing those same, that same tapered uh, rectangle over and over again. Even in the fur, it's the same, same deal. You might get confused sometimes when I talk about using the same shape language because it doesn't have to be the exact same shape, like the same exact dimensions. You can alter the form of it. Um, you know, you can spin it. The reason why you keep echoing that same shape or the similar shape is because it feels, um, it makes things feel balanced because of the repetition. And then you introduce some other unique elements to add some variety. It's always a balance of unity and variety. Unity, you use repeat shapes, repeating shape language and variety. You add some, you know, interesting bits in there. And you balance the two. Too much variety and it's chaotic. But too much balance, or excuse me, <laughs> too much variety and it's chaotic. Too much unity and it becomes boring. I'm not even going to try to draw his patterning here. I'm just making marks so that it... It makes the area busy. That's essentially what that is. It has some shape language to it, um, but it's really just a bunch of wavy lines. So I don't need to spend too much time on it. And that was what I wasn't doing with the previous sketches. I was spending too much time worrying about the little details when I should have been focusing on the shape language and understanding what, what made the character that character, what define them, what shapes define them, and how do I capture that quickly? I'm not trying to make a perfect drawing here, I'm trying to understand. Understand and translate, I guess I would say. So this girl is a really great example uh, because it's just so obvious. <laughs> Um, if you see that giant crescent moon shape on her hair, it's repeated literally everywhere. 
um, the top flap to the little satchels that she has on her the patterning on her boots even her hoodie has these little like spikes on it so that when you look at the hoodie uh, with her like facing towards you it looks like a crescent moon um, on the hoodie uh, the skirt looks like has that crescent moon shape as well it's just repeated everywhere and then the variety is these little like tattoo bits that she's got here on her well I guess they're not a tattoo because they're on like leggings but uh, the patterns on her leggings and her shoulder that's the variety so it makes it interesting I'm personally not a I don't think this is the best design or anything but it is successful uh, at having enough impact where it's it feels right And I made a good drawing from it, so <laughs> you can see right now I'm putting in because everything rides on that that hair shape. So I'm about to make it. I'm just trying to put in the pieces around it first. It's like a signature piece. Making things iconic is how people remember them, by the way. So making a bold shape like this and then repeating it everywhere that's why you can remember a character and why people can draw fan art of it without having to have a you know the reference of that character right in front of them they remember this girl's got a crescent moon for a head hair shape <laughs> and then it's repeated throughout the body so they'll get a couple bits here and there without the reference that's enough to understand that the character was made with these crescent moon shapes you may not know it but you sort of inherently uh, it's instinctual you pick it up even though you don't realize you're picking it up and that's how good design should be nobody should have to tell you you know what makes it a good design you should just feel that it is You know, now that I'm drawing this, I don't think I actually drew in the satchels. <laughs> I can't remember. We'll find out together. Could fast forward it, but no. Uh, we'll find out together. Oh yeah, you can see what I'm talking about with the um, that crescent moon shape is being used that curvature is being used for her skirt and then it's the same for the boot and the patterning on the boot it's that very deep swooping curve and then uh, that diamond shape on her chest is just a way to like point to her face because you see the diamond shape and it points up and then you're back to her face and then the hair leads you back down just one little loop so we just work on the final just drawing in some some visual noise to show that there's texture there. Trying to sort of just barely mimic the shape. And it does it does the job. I think I actually bothered to draw her her hand in. Yep, I do. You should challenge yourself to draw hands. I know it's not a uh, it's not typical because people try to avoid the hands because they're so hard but they're not so bad challenge yourself to draw the hands 
You can do it. You've, at least from this distance, it looks like it was successful for the most part. Especially if it's just going to be a sketch. Like just, just try it. Why not? And this last guy is pretty interesting. I actually had trouble figuring out what his uh, shape was, his shape language, until I saw that um, that shape below his arms, which I'm now having to look up. What is that? A polygon? No. What is it? Five-sided shape. Pentagon. Sorry, I just had to count to make sure I was right. <laughs> so that is a pentagon. Once I saw the little pentagon necklace thing that's hanging below his arms, that's when it began to make sense. Obviously, you can see the pentagon is repeated in those big, uh, what I believe are like kind of ropes that hang off the end of that, the blue cloak. You can see that repeated throughout the rest of the figure. It's in the, the gem that hangs around his neck. Um, you can start to see it even in the, the yellow patterning on the right leg. Starts to use that shape a little bit. Um, the actual shape I just outlined there around, like underneath his arms, all the way down the cloak, is a very extended pentagon. Um, from even the shape of his hair, like if you, uh, if you were to draw lines around the bulk of his hair, it would make a pentagon kind of shape. So it was very interesting. I was wondering why his, you know, like I said, it's hard sometimes to see why a design works. And sometimes there are more complex designs and they look good and you can't understand why they look good. So it's a it's good practice to like take some of your favorite characters and see why they look so good to you. Start to understand, get in the mind of the designer. Like why does this look good? What what shapes are they using to define this character to tell his story? Is he a good character, a bad character? There was a there was a guy, the mayor or something in Sword and Shield. I think he ended up being a bad character, but because it's such a like a kid's game, you can tell by his shape language that he's like gonna be an evil character in the future. <laughs> So one thing, when you become a designer and you start learning these things, and uh, you can you can ruin games and stories for yourself because you you start to see patterns of how people tell stories with shapes and patterns, and so you know who's good and bad, how stories might twist and turn just based on what you're seeing. So that's why I really appreciate it when designs, stories, things like that, they surprise me because it feels like I know too much. Sometimes the mystery is gone. So it's nice to know that, you know, people can still uh, do really unique things that just totally shock you. And we're about to finish this guy up. And that'll be the end of us drawing from reference from the game. So next episode, we will be diving into my own reference that I got a bunch of like street clothing and some cool reference of people just fashion. And we're going to try to capture some of that shape language so we can design our own character. I am very excited about this one. I think designing a Pokemon trainer is going to be really cool. So I hope you guys will tune in to the next one. 
let me hit you with the outro. Thank you for watching. I know this was a super long episode, longer than I normally make uh, the videos, but I hope that you had fun, enjoyed the game part and the drawing part, and I still have two more to come. In the next episode, we're gonna explore reference and try to build a visual library, and in the final one, we will actually create a Pokemon trainer. There was just too much video games and too much to draw for one episode, so I condensed it down as much as I could. <laughs> I hope you will continue to join me on the next episode of Concept Quest Pokemon Arceus. Until then, have a happy and healthy creative process. And if you have any ideas of what we should make our Pokemon trainer look like, drop it in the comments below. Bye!